Let's uh, continue with the next type of t-test, the paired samples t-test or dependent sample t-test. It's a test used to determine whether the mean difference between two sets of observations is zero. The equation to be used is t equals the d stands for the difference. So the sum of the difference over the n all over square root of the quantity summation uh, d, d squared minus summation of d you have to square over n all over n minus 1 times n. So let's, let's apply the concepts using our next exercise or exercise 3. The problem reads, the data below were taken from a study wherein the performance of the 10 students in an examination was recorded before and after the intake of the memory pill. Is there a difference in the mean score of the students before and after the intake of the memory pill? So we have 10 students and these are the performance in terms of the examination scores before the intake of the memory pill and after the intake these are the scores of the students in the examination okay let's um, write the hypothesis our null hypothesis is there is no significant difference in the performance of the students before and after the intake of the memory pill in symbol HO uh, says here that the mean of the examination before is equal to the mean of the examination after because there's no significant difference. The alternative hypothesis on the other hand, you can remove the no. So my alternative hypothesis here is there is significant difference in the performance of the students before and after the intake of the memory pill. So in symbol, H1 uh, says here that the mean, the mean performance is not before. The intake of memory pill is not equal to the mean performance after the intake of the memory pill. So, the statistical treatment to be used is the paired sample t-test or dependent sample t-test because uh, we will be comparing the performance of the students before and after the intake of the memory pill. In other words, we gather data on the same set of respondents on two occasions. Let's uh, solve the problem. So, to solve the problem, we need to add, so that's the equation, we need to add two more columns. The, the additional column here is uh, labeled as D. It's actually X minus Y. Or the score before minus the score after. And then... So, these are the numbers. So, the first entry is negative 3, which uh, came from 72 minus 75. One here is uh, from 61 minus 60 and so on. Now, the last column is labeled as d squared. It's simply x minus 1 squared. In other words, we will just be squaring the values on the column D. So our numbers here are, the first entry is 9, which is actually the square of negative 3. So negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, and so on. Next, add the numbers in the last two columns. So we have, so the sum of D is negative 6, while the sum of D squared is 488. So by substitution, we have 
t is equal to negative 6 over 10. Negative 6 came from the sum of d. And the 10 came from the number of respondents. So, the number of students. We have 10. So, all over the square root of 488 came from the sum of d squared minus negative 6 again, but you have to square over 10. All over 10 minus 1 times 10. And by calculation, the value of t is negative 0 0.26. Now, notice that the n minus 1 is the degrees of freedom which will be used later in finding the uh, critical level next is we have to determine the critical value from the table with respect to the level of significance and degrees of freedom again normally the level of significance is or the alpha is 0.05 the degrees of freedom now is n minus 1, which is 10 minus 1, which is equal to 9. Uh, let's go back to our alternative hypothesis. Again, there's no direction. Uh, we just want to know if there is difference. We are not claiming that it's greater or less than. Therefore, the test must be two-tailed. So, this is the table again. You have two tail the alpha of 0 0.05 and degrees of freedom of 9 so those points meet at a number which is 2.2621 and that is our critical level so using again our bell curve so this is the region of acceptance so these are the two tailed on the right side it's positive 2.2621 on the left side it's negative 2.261 which came from our table so next is we need to compare the calculated t with the critical value remember that our calculated t is negative 0 0.26 which can be located in this part of our graph therefore it's in the region of acceptance so we can say that the calculated t value of negative 0 0.26 is greater than the critical value of 2.261 hence the null hypothesis can be accepted so ho is accepted so how do we present our result so this is how we present the result so we have the performance before and after the intake of the memory pill the mean score and then the calculated t of negative 0.26 the t critical which is negative 2.26 and the decision is to accept the null hypothesis again the presentation is different when spss is utilized because the acceptance or rejection of ho is based on sig values these mean scores are actually the average uh, scores before the intake and this is the average score after the intake. Again, you simply add all the scores and divide by the number of cases.